Greetings. This is General CJG here, coming to you with a tra another trailer reaction. <laughs> yes, I know we did like Star Wars Visions days ago, a week ago, and now we're doing Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga because apparently Warner Bros. Games finally decided to release a trailer after so damn long. So yeah, we might as well make a reaction to it. And joining me here is none other than the most impatient guy for this game. Do you introduce yourself? Uh, <laughs> it's Jedi Knight Luke here, everyone. I didn't think I'd be back on an SOSW video so soon. But yeah, out of everyone in SOSW, it's probably me who's most eagerly anticipating this game. And I'm sure Master CJG will agree. The lack of marketing for this game has been appalling. Uh, yeah. And the fact, the fact that it's taken this damn long to get a new trailer out is stupid. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know what the hell's going on with Warner Bros. games and TT games, but, uh, oh well. So, but at least we got the trailer, so there is that. So, without further ado, let's react to this trailer. So, ready, Luke? Ready, General. Come on, count us down. Okay, three, two, one, go. ESRB, mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Oh, Darth Vader. Promise. Oh! Promise me you will train the boy. <laughs> yes, master. I was once a Jedi Knight. The same as your father. How did my father die? <laughs> ready are you? What know you of ready? The rebellion is reborn yes. today. Oh, absolutely. The war oh, that's is just so beginning. Insane. And I will not be the last Jedi. You know, with the Lego aesthetic, I'm going to find the sequels because they belong with the Lego. Praetorian guards, Chewie and a stormtrooper. Oh! Not gonna lie. Starfighter this. gameplay. Battle of Geonosis. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ray petting Chewie. Please give us more of that. Woo! Oh, wait. So we got some free roam. Get back. Is he drippy or riding a freaking VTRT? Oh. Play the entire saga. <gasps> Yoda vs. Sidious, heck yeah! Oh, Qui-Gon fighting Drew. Oh! Obi Wan vs. Django. How many missions are in this game? Oh. Let's see. Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga. What's the release date? Come. Well, it was the late spring, spring 2022. 2022. He is not ready. I am ready. I. Ben, I, I can be a Jedi. Ben, Lol. Tell him Lol. <laughs> Lol. Spring 2022. Okay. General, you want to go first on this? Okay, usually I'm last, but okay. Um, well, let's just say it's a funny trailer and graphically looks really impressive. That much I can say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm I definitely am excited for for this one. It's good. It's gonna be interesting. What do you think, Luke? Well, first off, even though it's taken over. A ridiculously long time thank you for finally giving us a trailer tt and wb should not have taken another year but we have it now and what we can see in this trailer it's damn impressive i mean general do you want to go shot by shot sure so the first thing we see is well qui-gon obi-wan and padme they are pretty much facing off against Darth Maul, who, of course, is, is in front of them, and, of course, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan will face him. Oh, no surprise there. We have uh, uh, Qui-Gon's death. Oh, yeah. It, it, with him tapping Obi-Wan on the face. Mm. Obi-Wan, promise me you will train the boy. <laughs> Lol. Um, <laughs> so, we ha so we have that, then going into... Into Anakin Skywalker holding a Anakin and Obi bear. Oh, yep. Oh my god. Anakin holding a 
bear because okay and then obi-wan saying to qui-gon yes master then it goes straight to episode three. uh the early stages of revenge of the sith surprisingly mm -hmm. with its redux of the chancellor in peril mission mm -hmm. uh... so we see Ooh, more anakin and obi-wan sabers ignited palpatine in the background and a little snippet of Obi-Wan fighting Dooku in the form of actual gameplay. Oh, yes, indeed. Indeed. Oh, did you notice there's more droids in the background? Um, where exactly? Uh, if, you see it, if you see it in 016, you'll see them on the stairs. Oh, oh yeah, they're sort of around the... They're around the upper balcony, which obviously was not the case in the film. It was just two super battle droids, but... I assume for gameplay purposes, they kind of had to do that. And then again, the original um, LEGO Star Wars video game and the complete saga did have not just super battle droids, but also the B1 battle droids when they weren't there in that scene. So I guess they kind of had to do that. And what do you think, General, of the little snippet of uh, using the Force that we get as part of this uh, gameplay snippet? The Force. Well... It does look interesting. I'm not gonna lie, it it does look mm. very interesting. Next we get my most eagerly anticipated level for this game. What is it? Well go on. Go to let's see. Around nineteen seconds. Nineteen seconds. Oh, you're talking about Anakin versus Obi Wan? I thought your favorite was literally Yoda versus Sidious. Oh, don't get me wrong, I am pumped as heck for that, but I've got to be honest, Battle of the Heroes, this is the level I'm most eager to play out of the entire game. I've got to be honest. Um, so we get a little snippet of um, saber clashing between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Does this look to be gameplay to you or part of a cutscene? Could be both. Could be, script, could be gameplay with a scripted event. It, maybe like a QTE or something? Yeah, kind of like that. It looks really good, though. Don't you think? <laughs> it does. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I mention in 021 that literally, Obi-Wan literally has a picture of him with a, a bottle celebrating a, a, a battle that he and the clones won. And he's like with Commander Cody, like, yeah! <laughs> and also, no notice how Obi-Wan in that picture has the mullet hair. So clearly this is a battle from very early on in the war. <laughs> so it's surprising considering but, that, you know, Commander Cod... Oh, wait, this is, this is Star Wars. I forgot. <laughs> uh, my bad. M my, mm. my, uh, it's because if you remember the original Star Wars timeline, Commander Cody came until 20 BY, you know, close to when... Mm. To ep close to when the episode 3 iconography was starting to show up. Mm. So, so, and we... So... Luke is looking at this picture and it's here that he asks Obi-Wan, how did my father die? And look at Obi-Wan's reaction. <laughs> oh, he was like, He's like, oh, uh, like, oh crap, I, should I tell him that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Of course you have to tell him that. Um, Next, at 23, 24 seconds, we get a snippet of Luke in his X-Wing. There isn't much to say with that, though, is there? No, there isn't. There isn't really. Uh, other than we're seeing, I don't know. I hope it's a better level than the Dagobah one from Lego Star Wars Two. Uh, I hope we don't have a stupid segment where you need Yoda on your back to use the Force for part of it, and then if you and then if you die, he'll leap back all the way to that air to the start of that area, and then having to collect him all over again. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was a nightmare. Um, so we have flying in the X-Wing. And of course, so... the Dagobah training. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, so, so you have a brief snippet of Luke fighting Vader. And here we get a little snippet of what the combat is going to look like. Um, like the, the Saber combat. And it definitely appears to be more dynamic from these little snippets. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's clear that you've got a lot more control over your character this time around. Yeah, indeed. 
it's very clearly not going to be the same old hack and slash. You only get a maximum of a three attack combo, a a jump, a, a standard jump attack, and then the Jedi ground slam. It's clear they're trying to do. I imagine that the um, jump, pound, and Jedi ground slam attacks are going to return, but it's clear that the that uh, the attacks that require being on foot to execute will require more effort this time around which is nice mm -hmm. yeah and then so we, then we we get Finn then we get fighting the with Sith Finn. order troopers you know the the red the red Sith troopers from episode nine mm. one of them is even and a also <laughs> i'm not sure if you noticed but you see the dodge that finn pulls off oh if you oh. if you notice, there's a dodge at the very last frame of that Ooh. shot. You see Finn pull off a dodge. I see it. Yeah, it and, it, it does it look similar of, to the Resident Evil Tree remake dodge, the one that you can. And it use. and it kind of and the camera kind of zoomed in. So I wonder if there is a more advanced dodge mechanic that you can unlock, whether it's in the game by def by like from the get go, or you have to upgrade your character to get it. because. It's been discussed somewhere that the gold bricks in this game are being replaced with kyber bricks. Wait, what? And you can use... Oh, that's something you didn't know about? Uh, um, no. Yeah, in a, in a written interview from what must be the better part of a year ago at this point, a, de a developer said that the gold bricks are going to be replaced with kyber bricks in this game, and that this time around that collectible will actually be put to use. So you're not just going to collect them for the sake of unlocking more more uh, levels or just to attain 100% completion. You'll actually be using them to upgrade your characters over the course of the game. I see. So I wonder if that little dodge there is something that you have by default or if it's something you have to get Kyber Bricks to purchase as an upgrade. Hmm. Uh, we'll have to see, but I'm surprised they're replacing them. Like I thought they they would stay, because you know well, they've, so they've, been a, they've been a staple of Lego Star Wars since the second game, I believe. Um, wait, weren't gold bricks in? No, gold bricks weren't in the first game, were they? No. Um, it was just the true Jedi status that was a thing. True Jedi status in that. Kids. And it wasn't even called true Jedi at that time. It was just the stud bar. Mm -hmm. um, but either way continuing on we get a snippet of Luke well quote unquote Luke <laughs> and I'm not saying that I'm not saying that because of the nickname he's known for within the state of Star Wars camp I'm saying that because we can tell that's obviously not Luke physically there let's be real Luke, Luke Warren you know to not confuse because <laughs> you know Luke Skywalker Luke Warren let's be real Luke Warren this is still Jake Alien Milker. There's no way around it. Note, <laughs> note that I said that obviously this isn't actually Luke there because, as we can tell by the outfit and the ignition of the lightsaber, this is the Force Illusion. Yeah, I, I know it's that... a Force Illusion, but it's still something made by Jake Alien Milker, so whatever. Anyway, uh, the last Jedi and but... his problems are another story. But actually, you know what? But... This being Lego form, I'm, uh, I can toler I can easily tolerate Jake Alien Milker and all other shenanigans the sequels do, but... because I'll never take it seriously. <laughs> so we have that, and we get Kylo with the two igniting their sabers. It's just part of a cutscene, nothing much to say there. And then we get Rey, by the looks of it, practicing her saber technique. She of course, she's training because, well, uh, of course, because in the movie she did that. So why why would she not do it? Well, well, it's just because this could easily be part of a training level, or this could be gameplay that was captured in free roam for the sake of. Um... No, this is a cutscene. There is no way in hell you'll be able to do something like that with any sort of a ca capture mode, unless unless they bring in like some sort of a capture uh, mode where you can record your game, your gameplay, your gameplay clips and shit. But even then, this is look, th this looks far. Yeah, this does look far more. Yeah, this is definitely more of a more of a cutscene type uh, move set. It's not something that that you you see in gameplay. 
Okay, so then we get the text, join the fight, and we get a snippet of the Praetorian Guard battle. Mm-hmm. Which Guard looks battle. really good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does look really good. Oh, wait. Wait, the, in the... Okay, I, I know that... Okay, wait, didn't in the movie... Didn't they destroy the Praetorian Guards first before that, enti- before that humongous hole in space was made in the movie? I haven't seen TLJ in a while, so I can't really remember. Well, I do rem- Well, I strongly do remember that the Praetorian Guards were killed before the hyperspace ram was done, so... Uh, yeah, I think this is just Lego Star Wars making their own shit, which you know what? Lego Star Wars, yeah, do your own shit. I don't give a shit. Put Snoke in a fucking bathtub for all I care. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Uh, a la Lego Force Awakens. Yes, because why not? <laughs> Seriously. Hell, I, okay. hell, I'll even take Palpatine scratching his ass. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, please no. Um... <laughs> Okay, next we have what appears to be Endor... Oh! Mm? I think I'd said that that was Chewie when we were first going through the trailer, but no, that's an Ewok, most likely Wicket, mm-hmm. um, pulling a somersault over a stormtrooper and slamming him on the head. Yep. Well, it certainly looks a bit more in- more interesting than how the Ewoks fought the Stormtrooper scene in Return of the Jedi, where they just roll the rocks and some other shit. So we'll see we'll see how it- how this game does that. <laughs> Next, we get a very brief snippet of free roam flight by the looks of things. And if you notice, General, towards the end of this shot, we get one of the seismic charges being deployed. Ooh! So that's so this is meant to be Obi Wan versus Django in the asteroid field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? How does that look? I think it. I think it looks freaking amazing. I mean, every time we see the seismic charges or sonic mines, as Rogue Squadron G likes to call them, um, you know what? I'm all for it. That that's always looked awesome. Mm. So. Okay. Next, we get another Battle of Geonosis snippet. Um, but this time around, it's Mace heading towards Django. Mm, interesting. Uh, did we see the Battle of Genosis in the previous Skywalker Saga trailer? We, because I don't remember. We did, but it was a snippet of Anakin performing a force push on some droids. Mm. So we get another snippet of it here. I see. Interesting. Uh, can I can I mention that the that the Lego character models look pretty damn awesome? Like they really. Mm. Do. Yeah, I mean, um, Lego as they've continued making minifigures and sets over the years have updated the accuracy of their minifigures. So obviously, to keep with that, TT are probably u- using the most up to date uh, Lego minifigures of each character that they have access to um, for the sake of the character models. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Definitely do that. So, indeed. Yeah, and the, and the environments all look really lifelike, considering this is a Lego game. <laughs> obviously, you've got obviously you've got the, um, the very obvious Le- Lego-looking assets, like the, the three towers that Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme were chained to in the as we see in the Geonosis snippet here, but the actual environments look very impressive, don't you think? Yes, they do. They do indeed uh, look. Next, we get the storming of the Tantive Four, mm-hmm. and we get we see a bit more of the third-person cover shooting mechanic from Lego Force Awakens, which has made its return here. No, mm, yeah, I I guess that is a good uh, idea. It wasn't a bad, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bad mechanic, but mm, no, actually, you know what? Yeah, I like it wasn't a bad one. Uh, the the, I li- the, I like thing it. Is, the only thing is that it does make Lego Star Wars a bit more of a generic third person shooter, but uh, it it worked and it didn't massively overstay its welcome in the in the Force Awakens. And if it doesn't do that here, then it will be fine. Well, I mean, they have to evolve the core gameplay staple somehow even if it does make things a bit more generic yes that that is true uh so i I guess there is that okay next we get (laughs) luke and luke and ray on acto and luke's hair 
style in The Last Jedi has never sat right with me, so even in the context of this Lego game, I can't ignore it as oh, uh... being a... I, I can't disregard it as... <clears throat> it's just, I hate that hairstyle. I hate it. <laughs> oh, and, oh, oh, and he, oh, I'm all for it. It, it only further segments the, the reality that this is Jake Alien Milker. Like, it's perfect. <laughs> it's just perfect to, like I said, to make it, to put the fact that, yeah, this is indeed Jake Alien Milker. Luke Skywalker, the last time we saw it in Disney Star Wars was in The Mandalorian. So, yeah, that was the last time. <laughs> and, of oh, course. it's the... <laughs> It's the it's it's the um, outreach. It's the reach out with the force scene, and Chewie cuts in in the middle. <laughs> oh, I love I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and oh, well, Jake Kelly Mooker is, is like. Um. So next we get another. We actually do get a look at the, the galaxy. We yeah, we get a look at the uh, the UI of the game, particular the galaxy map. Okay, so. And as we can see here, we have... Shall I go through all the planets or just name some of them that are on here? Mm, um, I, I, I guess the ones we have not seen in any trailers. Well, uh, Bespin, we haven't really had a look at a proper look at Bespin until now, I don't think. Mm. Um, uh, Wait, uh, Agent Claus, Cantonica? What planets are those? Oh, Wait, Cantonica? Yeah. Wait, is Cantonica where Canto Bite is? Something. I doubt that, but let's see. Check. Okay. Check. Cantonica, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? Because I think I, because uh, I think I have right. heard that's yes. where the Canto Bite is. Yes. 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 Stuff is. Yes, it is. I just checked. It so, is. so it is. So, and then Agent Kloss is the forest planet that we see the Resistance on in Rise of Skywalker. Uh, oh yeah, Agent. Yeah, Agent Kloss. I knew more about about it. Uh, so mm. yeah, now I remember. Yeah, it is the one from Rise of Skywalker. Um, Kajimi. It's the one from. It's this no planet where we get revealed yep. that poses smuggler or was a smuggler. Yeah, Spice Runner. Mm hmm. Uh, Camino. Oh, it's there. Yeah, I mean, we did see it in this trailer. Um, and as we can see here, so the actual snippet in the background, as the UI is being pulled up, is uh Luke, Return of the Jedi, Luke on Dagobah by the looks of things as he's pulling up this map. Mm hmm. That looks um, interesting. And have you seen? You've played Lego Force Awakens, right, General? Or at least know yeah, about it? I've finished it. Okay, so you do, you have played the game, good. So, the way planet selection worked in that game was you would go, you you would know, you go to a, gal a galaxy map by going up to select screens in each environment, and it would show you the entire, like, the galaxy map would take up the entire screen. Mm -hmm. um, but this time around, they're not doing that. They're bringing up each planet in the form of a holographic projection map. Mm. Which is a which is a nice little aesthetic touch, and I wonder actually if this is. Um, do you think this is free roam, given that we can see planets from all across the the spectrum on this? I would say on... so, considering that a few seconds later on we see Trip. You're riding an ATRT. <laughs> Wait, do we? Yes, on Kashyyyk. We do also get a snippet of being hyperspaced to Tatooine, I oh, think, yes. in after the X-Wing. Yeah, it's shortly after seeing this map. Um, so we get that. Does this, I assume, we'll be able to manually control the vehicles in space rather than just being teleported and waiting through a loading screen, so that would be nice. So this is going to be close to something like uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas where you could actually visit uh, every planet uh, with your ship and actually control control them. Hmm, that'll be something interesting. Uh, let's see, so... So it's the A or X button in the case of PS4 to travel, and then X to view the map, so that'll be square. Um, yeah, so that's when you're looking at the galaxy map. But I I wonder, will we, will we be able to manually fly the distance as well as tra um, get teleported every I, 
time. I doubt it. I doubt this game would have a humongous, like huge open world like Starlink Battle for Atlas or No Man's Sky. I doubt it would go that far. Uh, what it would do is like have every planet be like a huge, like a, like you can literally like fly around the the planet, uh, you know, its atmosphere, both in space, the thermosphere, which is space, then uh, the uh, then the other part, then go inside the, pla the planet through the atmosphere and actually land on it. Uh, maybe, maybe that's where they would go, though I think the landing would be a bit more scripted. Because I doubt they'll do the Starlink Battle for Atlas or the No Man's Sky approaches. I doubt it. This is a Lego game. Okay. And if it actually does do it, it would only hammer the fact that EA had so much potential in doing the best Star Wars game. Like the best open world game ever. And instead they decided, no, let's put, let's do loot boxes. Let's do Galaxy of Heroes. <laughs> let's make money! The, in the <laughs> shitty shit and dirty way. Uh, I mean, yeah, so you think we'll get so you think we'll be able to fly around the planet's atmosphere and enter the planet manually, but you don't think we'll be able to travel to the planet manually? As, as in flying from planet to planet without hyperspace being used to loading screen? Yeah. No. Uh-uh, no. Okay. But don't get me wrong, if we did, that would be something, wouldn't it? It will make this game a hell of a lot more special than anything else. And it, and it literally will be the absolute closest we'd have to a Star Wars open world game. Because right now, the only thing we have for that is Jedi Fallen Order. Because that, uh, that, you can definitely travel to any planet you want and, and, and explore them and be really sure. Uh, but, True, but you, yeah. can't, you can't manually control your ship. I was going to say um, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I was actually going to say Galaxies. The MMO from way back in it's 04, an, it's I think it was. MMO, MMOs, I mean, MMOs, it shouldn't be a surprise considering that they're MMORPGs. They need to have humongous maps to sustain so many players. So that makes mm. more sense. But when we're talking about, when I'm talking about open world games, I'm talking about single player open world games. Because there's this notion from a good chunk of publishers, <laughs> EA being one of them, that, oh, nobody cares about single player games. Who's going to want to play that shit? And single player games don't sell as well as they used to, even though Jedi Fallen Order has since gone on to disprove that. A and game from EA's own library. And also Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And Spider-Man Spider Man PS4. Uh-huh. God of War. God of War. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and and also oh, and right now probably Psychonauts 2 is probably gonna sell that much. Uh oh, and also, of course, how can I forget? Well, EA's own Mass Effect Legacy Edition also sold a lot. <laughs> mm. So, so you, so you know, with what you said about the landing being probably a bit on the scripted side, mm. yeah. we do get a snippet of landing here in game, and it does look a bit scripted. Yeah, because we because we don't see the X-wing actually like uh, manually landing. If we actually saw that, that'd be huge. Hmm. It would be huge, but no, we're not seeing. Then we see Luke, so, of course, riding uh, uh, a creature. Dewback. Yeah, a dewback. I should have known it was a dewback. Uh, so yeah. Then we see Lando, uh, like, like casually oh, and endlessly. Yeah, going on Kashyyyk. And then, oh, then we see, oh, Ray in the jetpack. I almost forgot about this. And then we see Citripio in the ATRT. I told you, Luke, that he actually was riding an ATRT. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's almost as ridiculous as the. Um, wasn't there a snippet of C-3PO riding a Bantha in the previous trailer? Well, I think he could also do that in the previous Lego Star Wars Complete Saga. But him riding a Bantha, I mean that. I mean that that makes more sense than him riding an ATRT. An ATRT, yeah. And then we get Janet wandering on Kefba. Yeah, it's ja Janet wandering on Kefba in. Uh, yeah. Then we get play the entire saga and look at this, General mm. Yoda versus Palpatine. Your <laughs> your dream has come true, Luke. I'm most I'm most excited to see the Anakin versus Obi Wan level, obviously. But if we're talking about levels that the complete saga did not give us any um, depiction of, this then. This would probably be my most anticipated new level um, for okay. Lego Skywalker Saga. So I'm, uh, Lego uh, Skywalker Saga, excuse me. Okay. Uh, As, okay. 
Uh, as as hyped as I am at seeing Snoke in a bathtub or Palpatine scratching his ass, uh, <laughs> I let's be, I I think Yoda versus Darth Sidious in Lego form is actually fucking badass. We've not seen that in any Lego game before. Hell, we haven't even seen it in video game form, as far as I know, unless you literally do a free oh. play on Lego. No, um, the Revenge of the Sith, the Revenge of the Sith movie game didn't have a Yoda versus Sidious mission. Um, not even the, the GBA version. Sorry? Not even the GBA version or DS versions. No, the Lego video the Lego video game from 05, which was entirely prequel based, didn't have this. The complete saga didn't have this. Yeah. Yeah. It's only taken you let's think. It's only taken you you know 17 I say 17, because the game is scheduled to come out in 2022 now. Um, but I guess you could say, yeah, it's only taken you 17 years, TT Games, but you've given it to us. Thank you. <laughs> wow, we literally had to wait eternity to actually get that scene in video game form. And it's from and a Lego game. And do you notice, um, so it's clearly based on, just talking about the Yoda vs. Sidious thing, it's clearly based on the end of the fight because you've got the Force Lightning versus Tutaminish, Tutaminish clash. Mm -hmm. You know what we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. And do you notice how the platforms they're standing on are moving a bit? Oh, they're levitating because the Force is so mm -hmm. strong. They're literally levitating the shit out of it. So, so does that mean the entire fight is going to take place in the office until the end? I don't know. Whatever form, at least let's have it. Because seriously, it's been so... F it, like, the movie came out yeah. in 2005 and we have not seen any sort of video game form of it. Unless you literally make it up yourself. Yeah, considering... The closest thing you can get to this right now is the Complete Saga 2-player mode. Mm -hmm. Which has the Senate Chamber level in there. But of course, it's not part of the main story, so... Indeed. Yeah. So, indeed, look. Then after this epic moment, we see Luke exploring half. It has to be because it's is it on. is it is it Luke? It looks like Can to me because of the jacket. Oh really? I mean, look closely at the color of the jacket. I see <laughs> it, but uh, I I maybe it's Han. I don't know. <laughs> so who knows? If it because well, Luke's outfit on Hoth is that creamy white color, whereas. Han's outfit was brown or a dark blue, so it might be Han. Mm, maybe. Who knows? Okay, then we get then we get Finn shooting down some Tie Fighters. Mm -hmm. I wonder if th that's from. Oh, I think it. I think it's from the Force Awakens because he's using his First Order outfit. If I'm not mistaken. If it know, it might be it might be from the Last Jedi because I can see ATSTs in the background. Maybe oh may maybe it is he's probably using ah he's probably using the First Order uniform. Uh, a bit confusing because I don't see his front. Anyway, so whatever. Then we see Millennium Falcon uh, destroying some Tie Fighters and attacking some Star Destroyers. Pretty cool. Uh, it's in front of Hoth, so pretty cool. Then we see Qui Gon kicking some ass against the freaking battle droids. Fuck yeah! And and again, um, I uh, it seems just to talk about these two snippets, the the vehicle combat, specifically in regards to the uh, starships, looks far more realistic from a control point of view. Um, this time around, I know that Lego Force Awakens was kind of where this thing started, and it looks like Lego Skywalker Saga is continuing the trend of giving free reign with the vehicles. That is good. Because I think even you will agree with me, General, that the vehicle sections in... Uh, well, the space vehicle sections especially in the previous LEGO Star Wars games weren't as free as they could have been from a control standpoint. Mm, yeah, indeed. And then we get Qui-Gon, as you already said, uh, taking down some droids. And again, the combat looks very fluid. Oh, then we get Chewie shooting the shit out of Boba Fett. Because why not? <laughs> mm. Yeah, he's shooting at Boba Fett, don't you notice? Yeah, I did. I did. And the camera angles look very cinematic, even for gameplay. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. The Force Awakens also had this type of cinematic uh, gameplay styles. Mm. 
Then we get Obi Wan versus Django by the looks of it mm. on Camino. Yeah, how can it not be? And very impressive looking weather effects. Oh yes, I mean the oh, weather effects you... were already impress oh. were already kind of impressive in uh, in the original Lego Star Wars. Um, you know, for PS2, GameCube, Xbox, but now, oh, this is even better. Oh, and. If you notice in this snippet on Camino, you can actually see R4 just casually in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. Never mind that my Jedi pilot is getting shot to smithereens. Yes. I'm just going to chillax in the background. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> oh, okay. my God. Okay, next. Oh, next we get... Uh... We get well, basically, basically we get Ray getting the, one of those blue blocks that you were talking about, Luke. The ones that are replacing the gold bricks. The these so these might be what the Kyber bricks look like. Yeah, they, they look, might be. They look more like holographic bricks to me than Kyber bricks. And the oh, well. and the um, or well, who knows? Maybe these are a different type of collectible. Um. Possible. Maybe the Kyber bricks look more like crystals, hmm. which, given the name, they probably should do. Um, but if these are the Kyber bricks, then okay, fair enough. And the snippet of the platforming that we actually do get, you know, as in Ray leaping from one uh, grip point to the next, it does look like a continuation of the of the climbing that we got in Lego Force Awakens, hmm. which is a which is good, yeah, definitely. And Takodana, that's the planet we're on here. Um, the detail that's gone into Maz's fortress looks really nice. Mm, definitely. There's a lot. There's plenty of detail. There's yeah, there is a f two X wings for some reason there. Uh, who know? Who maybe, knows? We'll maybe the maybe that's free roam gameplay um, that's been captured and. They just happen to use that vehicle to land on the planet. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's free roam. Now this at 131. Check this, General. Oh yes. You, when when they basically get the the bongo to go to the underwater and they get attacked by the humongous fish. We're actually getting that in gameplay form now. <laughs> that's another. I believe it's been talked about that that was something which was planned for the Lego video game, the, the prequel-based one, that just didn't make the cut. Mm. And now? It looks like we're getting it. But, here's the question, will this be a story level, or will this be a free roam thing? I don't know. Well, it seems to be story, if you notice, because it's Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Jar Jar right there in the bongo. I know, but um, I believe it's been confirmed that the negotiations level is actually going to be a free roam event to kick off the game rather than a story mission. Hmm. So whether this will be replayable, the Gungan sub thing, that remains to be seen. We'll see, Luke. We'll see. But it it's cool that we're getting it, right? Yep. Indeed. So... There is that. What else? Oh, uh, Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter going to do... Oh, you know which moment from Rise of Skywalker. It's the it's the one moment in the trailer that literally made me say, Ah! Ah! You know which one? Oh, you forgot. Ray flipping over Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter. Yes. And then, of course, once the movie came out, we realized what she was doing was flipping over it to slice a wing. I mean, it was already evident even from the trailer that she was going to do that, but yeah, she did do I it. Assume, I assume it made you go crazy because it only further cemented Ray's Mary Sue Venus. status. Yeah. Not crazy, but definitely made me like, oh, God. <laughs> so, we've, so, we've, so we've got that. Damn. And that's it. The Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga logo appears. Oh, wait. There is one more thing after this logo, other than besides the release date. Uh, we get one well, last we'll talk, thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, yeah. Ben, I can be a Jedi. Ben, tell him I'm ready. Yep. And then <laughs> only for him to literally <laughs> destroy one of Yoda's teapots. 
<laughs> wait, was it a teapot? Yeah. Let's see. You go frame by wait, frame wait, wait, wait. It's a teapot. Oh, yes, it is a teapot, but it it's such a blink and you miss it thing that it's quite difficult to notice at first. Yeah. And do you notice actually that look at Anakin's lightsaber here? Obviously, hilt wise, it doesn't look any different, but look at the grime that's oh, on yeah. it. Yeah, I know. I notice that it looks older. It looks. It looks more gritty, more like it, it's starting to get more aged. Yeah. Which, given that it's only been in use for three years and then again very sparingly used over the course of three years after a 19 year absence or a 19 year residence, I should say, in a trunk in Obi Wan's hut, that makes sense. And it's nice that I th do you think it's quite interesting actually that. Um, TT Games decided to do that. I mean, yeah, sh sure. I mean, I mean, it's what it's whatever. I mean, the lightsaber even 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 in the movies didn't really look that old. So I know, but it's interesting that they have for Anakin's saber in particular. Come the the OT when Luke has it, they've decided to grime it up. And what I'm wondering is if that is if that's the same case for. Oh no, it isn't. Ray does not have that old lightsaber, that old gritty looking one. No, instead it's a brand new one. I know because I'm seeing the snippet where she makes the freaking Matrix move to cut the, the TIE fighter. It looks new. I'm guessing that's to mimic the fact to pay homage to it being reconstructed in Rise of Skywalker. But if so, that change doesn't that change from I assume it would be pristine in the prequel levels to grimy here in the OT levels to then being back to completely pristine in the sequel levels doesn't make much sense. I mean, the sequels didn't make sense even in the actual canon, so fuck it. I'll let it slide. Mm. But yeah, <laughs> you, the, you probably, the grime... You, on... you probably noticed, look, that any continuity issues or anything, whatever, I literally don't give two shits about when it comes to LEGO Star Wars, because it's LEGO Star Wars. Like, who cares? And the, and the grime, the... Yeah, the, the fact that, that they decided to put the grime on the saber hilt, though, for this is an interesting touch. They didn't have to do that, but they did. Um, mm -hmm. And also... If you look at Yoda here, doesn't he look a bit more prequel era? He looks more than expressive. He probably should? That much I will say. He does look more expressive, a bit more active. Oh, and also a bit more taller. <laughs> yeah, he has been. That's probably uh, because Lego have made changes with their mini with their Yoda minifigure to make him a little bit taller over the years. And if you notice, they've also updated R two D 2s character model. Just as Lego have done with their R2D2 minifigures. I definitely prefer more that he was fully white instead of having a bit of grey on the top, but oh well, whatever. Yeah, it's for screen accuracy reasons. And then we get Force Ghost Obi Wan. Face palming. With just improving <laughs> face palm. So. And melting down. Then the we. Yeah. <laughs> now, then we come to. Um, the versions of the game and the release date, and also the people involved, which is Disney, Lucasfilm Games, TT Games, Warner Bros. Games, Lego Games, and the specific versions of this game, Xbox Series X, Series S, Xbox One Original, uh, or the S, uh, PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Nice. Mm. I find it interesting, though, they label PC as the platform that's available for it, but there's no image of a physical uh, release for it in the lineup. I'm guessing that's because Steam and Green Man Gaming and places like that are far more popular these days to get PC games. Uh, not only that, well, not only that, there's also the Epic Games Store and most PC users nowadays don't even go for physical copies, they go for digital. Mm. So here's where this might split hairs for people, the release window. Spring 2022. Mm. General, do you want to give your thoughts on that? The release date? Um, I mean, if they, I mean, they delayed it, so fine. I mean, at least we, at least we got an estimation, uh, which is be it's better than literally not having shit, which is what we. 
yeah. it had for like a year on the, when it came to this game. It's all a question of it's all a question of whether or not TT Games will actually be able to commit to this release window. Because as we know, by the time this game's last trailer came out, it was delayed to spring 2021, despite originally being scheduled before that to come out in 2020. And what happened, General? Mm. It got delayed. So let's hope that this game doesn't get pushed back another year to 2023. Uh, if that happens again, you're gonna start splitting hairs more, uh, like so many more times. Look, people have already been splitting hairs about the lack of marketing for this game. So, um, hopefully, TT Games will be able to keep on track with this. Um, but it is nice that they are aiming to get it out as early as possible without seriously rushing it. Mm hmm. So it says spring 2021, so that's any time from, what, March to May 20... Oh, sorry, spring 2022. So that's any time from, what, March to May? Yeah. Those are the spring months. So as long as TT Games keep on track as best they can, hopefully we'll get this game in hand, you know, before too long. <laughs> and given... I'll be honest, I'm not totally surprised that they're pushing it back another few months. Mm. I would have loved to see a 2021 release for this, but again, given all the troubles they've had, it does not surprise me that they've pushed it back to next year. To be honest, it actually is for the better, not only for more development time, but also the competition in uh, in October and November is going to be fierce. Do you know what games are coming out in these months? No, but please tell me. Okay, well, first of all, we got Battlefield 2042 releasing in October 1, if I'm not mistaken. So that that's one. Oh, October 22, uh, 2021, and that's going to be a big game. So... There is that. Then we then we get uh, Metroid Red. Well, actually, Metroid Red is before this game. Actually, October eight. So, well, Metroid Red is it's all it's actually been crushing in the pre-orders uh, recently, like in GameStop and even in Amazon when it was first unveiled. And Amazon still has sold out copies of Metroid Red, even though it, the game has not come out yet. Which yes. Point for us Metroid fans. Yes, we need more sales for this game. We need them badly. So, yeah. <laughs> so, there's that. So, Metroid Dread, Battlefield 2042. We got the Pokemon remakes of Diamond and Pearl coming out in November, which are going to be huge. So, there's that. We got ugh, fucking Activision and their Call of Duty, their annualized Call of Duty. Uh, which is called the <laughs> Vanguard. I'm not buying that because fuck Activision with their shitty workplace conditions, uh, particularly regards women. Fuck them for that. I'm not going to support them. And no, Serious Star Wars will also not support them. And yes, I'm, I'm saying that's a fact. Fuck them. So Activision, you can go fuck off. So there is that. Some other games that are releasing in, in November and December. Well, as far as I know, well... Let's just say it's those. Oh, Shin Megami Tensei 5. Oh, yes, that's also going to be coming out. Holy shit. That's going to be something. Like, that's that's going to be a big one. People definitely are excited for that one. Oh, yes, Back for Blood is coming out in October. And Far Cry 6 and Dying Light 2. No, Dying Light 2 was delayed. Uh, but Far Cry 6 is definitely coming out. Uh, oh, Halo Infinite. It comes out on December 8, 2021. So, even though that was included on Game Pass for free. Uh, but it's and the multiplayer free to play, but it's still gonna be like so. Yeah, there's there's many there's many games that are gonna be com coming out in October and November and even December. So so you know what? I think in this case they did the right move in delaying. Even if it, they had delayed it for January or February 2022 or even March, they did the right move because it's gonna be saturated. Oh, and of course, fucking FIFA and Madden coming out in these years too. EA Sports, it's in the wallet. 
uh, <laughs> it's in the grid and the wallet as well uh oh sunny colors ultimate is also coming out in september uh like so many so many games are gonna be coming out like october like from o september to december they're like the busiest months in regards to game releases if you're not if you're not a huge profile game that that has a humongous audience and so many people excited for it you're you're gonna be left out in the dust like you will be so it's so yeah in this case for if warner bros games wanted lego star wars to sell yeah they did the right move in actually delaying it <laughs> they did the right mm. move so oh yeah. and forza horizon 5 is also coming out on november 9 and apparently the next gen version of gta 5 is coming out on november 11. like holy shit there's so much that's going to be coming out in these few months like and my money's only ready for metroid dread <laughs> So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it being delayed also gives you a higher chance of getting this game as soon as possible when it does come out mm -hmm. rather than being released late 2021 when there's going to be so much more competition for not just your money but a ton of other people's money mm -hmm. yes uh, indeed. so big question has seeing this trailer rekindled your excitement for this game well, I was already kind of excited for for the game, but but oh, now I I'm ex I'm definitely excited in playing it. I do want to I do definitely want to play it. And if I and if a friend of mine or whomever decides to like, oh yeah, I want to I want to play that. Uh, let's play it together, and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm sure. Then let's buy it and let's play it together. We'll have a laugh. <laughs> so that will, <laughs> that will further incentivize me to actually play it. Will you be buying this game physically or digitally? I'd prefer physically, but if there's no way, I'd go digitally. The only game I want to buy physically, no matter what, is Metroid Red. <laughs> Got you. Um, so spring 2022, so that gives us anywhere from, let's think, so March to May. They're the spring months, and it's now August. So for... So that gives us about nine months. Nine months at most. Six, uh, six months at least. Six, seven months at least. Wait, hang on. August to March. So Mar August to March, that's seven months, isn't it? Uh, August to which one? March. That's seven months. Uh, to March? Yeah, it's like seven yep. months. Yeah. So that's seven months, but then if it... But to May, that's nine months. So we have... So, yeah. So that gives me seven months, at least nine months at most to, com to complete my LEGO Star Wars completion binge before this game comes out. <laughs> Barring any further delays. <laughs> uh, so, before we close out, and I think you'll agree with me here, General, what they, what TT and WB need to do now is give this game more active marketing. They do, they do need that, but most importantly, the game needs to release Polish. We already got too many Cyberpunk 2077s roaming around. Mm, I completely agree that this game should release should release in as polished a state as possible. But if we don't start getting more consistent marketing for the next however long it's going to be before the game comes out next year, we're going to end up make there are going to be massive social media riots again uh, against GT and WB, which Let's... I'm sure they don't want. Let's be real. Even if they do get those riots, it will be nothing compared to other games getting all sorts of uh, backlash for all sorts of other stupid shit. So, <laughs> no, but no, but 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 even if they, even even if the only marketing is just this Gamescom trailer and maybe the Game Awards, um, it, they, they'll still have a size a sizable amount. Considering that again, March twenty twenty two, March or May twenty twenty two, like so far, almost not many games have even made any sort of release dates for for those times. And like the only game I can think of that could even compete against it will be Horizon Forbidden West, but that because I released it in February, but even then that's a PS4, PS5 exclusive. So whereas this game is full is full third party multi multi platform. So so yeah, I, yeah, I don't I don't think Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga has to worry too much about competition for now. I don't think he has to. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, so you should be thankful that they didn't release it on 2021 because if they did, or the remainder of 2021, because they did, it would have been completely smashed in terms of in terms of its popularity and its uh, well and its commercial success because of other games, more notorious and more mm -hmm. exciting games. Yeah, I mean, I do remember saying to to you, General, that if this game didn't appear at this event, it then that would have completely ruled out a. 2021 release um which obviously hearing that it was going to be at gamescom did rekindle my hopes for a 2021 release somewhat but i didn't want to get fully hyped for it just in case this would happen but to be fair again as i've said it's not a total surprise and of course the more time this game spends in the oven well in theory that means it should be a more polished game once it comes out. <laughs> it should be, yeah. Uh, by the way, I I just checked, and uh, and the only competition that Lego Star Wars has in that same month is WWE 2K22. Oh <laughs> uh, well, bear in mind it says it says spring, so any time from March to May of next year, this game is. Well, apparently scheduled to come out now. In that so... case, the only other competition besides WWE 2K22 would be Stalker 2. But that's it so far. There's a confirmed release date in that time frame. Yeah, yeah, given, I mean, obviously the LEGO games are popular, but against all of the other AAA games that are coming out in the last four months of the year, for the, in the last four months of this year, this game wouldn't perform as well as it could do sales-wise. wrecked. The fact that even Metroid Dread is, is smashing it into pre-orders, like, that says the LEGO Star Wars, uh, the, Sky, the Skywalker Star would have had a chance. Because even Metroid Dread has had more promo more marketing from Nintendo than this LEGO Star Wars game has had from Warner Bros. games. <laughs> Which, I honestly think this needs to be said. So, WB have, what, four major titles? Scheduled for release in the next year, um, Back for Blood, Gotham Knights, Hogwarts Legacy, and this game. Mm -hmm. And considering that two of those other three games had been delayed for 2022, they could have used that as ample opportunity to give this game more marketing, which they haven't. Um... And no, this trailer, as good as it is, is not enough. I'm talking about consistent marketing. Which right now you know? only which right now Metroid has more than Lego Star Wars, which that's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah. So but now that this game is being delayed another seven to nine months, there is absolutely no excuse for not giving this game more time in the marketing realm. Mm -hmm. They have to do this. Yes. They they have to start promoting it more now because if they don't, fans are not going to be happy. <laughs> Even just a simple release trailer a few days or or a month before before it comes out would do good enough. Like I said, this competition is not fierce in in the in spring twenty twenty two. Like the only games are WWE two K twenty two, which already has a lot of fans skepti skeptical of that one. Mm -hmm. So there's not day one. Stalker two definitely has more excitement behind it. So, but that's a Microsoft first party one. So it's going to be releasing on Xbox Series X and X and PC. So that so that game is gonna is definitely going to be leaving out the Switch and the PS PlayStation guys. So it's not that much for real competition. At least we have a renewed release window and not another coming soon thing <laughs> so so because if if this trailer ended with saying the game was coming soon that could have meant any time from like two months to hey expect this game in another 30 years <laughs> more splitting hairs yeah exactly but now that this release window has been given to us we need to keep an eye on this game like a hawk, because we never know when this could change again. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Anyway, so final things to say, Luke? This trailer, again, it shouldn't have taken a year, but what it has shown us has me mega hyped, and spring 2022 can't come soon enough. <laughs> Indeed. As for me, well, 
we'll see when the game comes out definitely excited for it so that's it for now and we'll see you guys on the next state of star wars video bye bye see you everyone